strong facilitator where the um, there's a kind of basin there where the uh, the narrow boats tie up. And well, this is the Vale of Langoflin. And the canal, I mean, there was a, so I met some people down on the bridge, you noticed that there was a, a place on the canal where they're doing horse-drawn, because of course the canals used to be horse-drawn in the olden days. And it was uh, it was designed to bring down fresh water from the mountains, and plus other loads, but uh, particularly a fresh water supply down to the Midlands. That was the, uh, the original uh, idea of it. Now, you know, canals used to be everywhere. Did you know the city of Birmingham has more canals than Venice? <coughs> Than Venice in Italy, um, but many of them are all choked up, and there um, a lot of work has been done by the British Waterways Board to restore canals over the last few years. And they are quite a place if you want a really, really relaxing holiday. Uh, you know, like a narrowboat like this one that we're going to go on is a great way to spend a week or so just puttering up and down the canals. But they link up the whole country. You know, you can go from here to like Auckland, you can go all the way down to London, join up the Grand Union. Um, you know, taking quite a few days to do it, but it is, it is possible. There's a, this vast old network of canals that used to carry all the heavy loads before the railways came in in the early 19th century. See, these locks, you know, are, are the, uh, the kind of with a sluice case on either side to uh, to enable the canal to uh, rise and gradients. There are no locks on this, though. We don't have to stop and open a lock. It's a, it's a level stretch that we're going to do. And we're not doing a circle. We're going from one point down here up to another point where there's a nice old pub. And you can have one drink. This is the, for, the, for the, uh, the canal boat people. One drink. Uh, they've got a little bar, a tiny little bar at the end there. You can have a drink. It doesn't have to be alcoholic. They do soft drinks, of course, and they do teas and coffees. And uh, and then a second drink up. The canals, the one I saw in Dublin seemed to be pretty Yeah, six yeah. foot maximum. And you should get the uh, six foot maximum. You'll get some, some information on there by the uh, the woman generally who who, who, who who mans the bar, I was going to say, who would take charge of the bar. She, she has a little microphone there. The sound system's not all that good. But, um, you know, if you've got any any um, information questions, do, do, do ask her. I mean, I know a few general things about it, but she, she's got all the details up and down the canals but they link up the whole country you know you can go from here to like Auckland you can go all the way down to London join up the Grand Union um, you know taking quite a few days to do it but it is, it is possible there's a, this vast old network of canals that used to carry all the heavy loads before the railways came in in the early 19th century see these locks you know are, are the uh, Kind of with a sluice case on either side to uh, to enable the canal to uh, rise and gradients. There are no locks on this, though. We don't have to stop and open a lock. It's a, it's a level stretch that we're going to do, and we're not doing a circle. We're going from one point down here up to another point where there's a nice old pub, and you can have one drink. This is the, for the for the uh, the canal boat people. One drink. Uh, they've got a little bar, a tiny little bar at the end there. You can have a drink. It doesn't have to be alcoholic. They do soft drinks, of course, and they do teas and coffees. And uh, and then a second drink up the canals. The one I saw in Dublin seemed to be pretty. Yeah, easy. six yeah. foot maximum. And you should get uh, six foot maximum. You'll get some some information on there by the uh, the woman generally who who, who, who who mans the bar. I was going to say who would take charge of the bar. She she has a little microphone there. The sound system is not all that good, but. Um, you know, if you've got any any um, information questions, do 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 ask her. I mean, I know a few general things about it, but she she's got all the details. Yes, it's quite shallow. You know, there's no. Uh, if you fall in, you can probably sort of like touch the bottom. But the amazing thing is this aqueduct, and I mean, though, she'll explain how it was constructed. It's early 19th. Oh, 
And there are fish in the canal, but nothing you would eat. Roach, perch, dace, bream, pike, and eels. So here we are on Thomas Telford's Pontica Saturday Aqueduct. Built in a period of 10 years, from 1795 to 1805, at a cost of £47,000 and 18 shillings. The aqueduct is 1,007 feet long, that's 306 metres. It's just under 12 feet wide, which allows a little over 7 feet for the boat and a little over 4 feet for the horse to walk alongside towing it, because of course, in those days, all transport was horse drawn. And the height when we remove the river at the far end will be 126 feet, 8 inches. I'm going to sit there right there so I don't lose it. Now, looking through the right hand window, you can see another set of arches further down the valley. And that's a railway viaduct. That was opened yeah, in 1848. It's on the chest of the Shrewsbury line. And one of the first trains to go across there broke down in the middle at night. The passengers had to wait until next morning for rescue. Now back to the aqueduct. We, uh, the aqueduct is, uh, stands on 18 stone pillars. Local stone grown down from the hills around, dressed on site, and the blocks held together with a mortar that was strengthened 